it's Tony from Stamps By Me. I hope you're all well. Today I wanted to show you an overview of some new stamps we have just launched. These will be available on our website and on Creating Craft. We have three new stamp sets in total, two of which are lamination stamps and one which is a colouring stamp. So in this demonstration I'm going to show you how to create those two images quite quick and easy just using a bit of coloured ink and some black outline. So the solid portion on the stamp is the black part and the outline is the pencil drawing. So if you've seen my tutorials in the past you will know that I pencil draw the outline and then I infill with watercolour and then those two parts get separated and that is how you end up with our lamination stamps. So I've just taken the solid portion from the clear acetate sheet and I'm just going to secure some normal cardstock into my Eureka. Now for those of you that haven't seen the Eureka, I have a specific page on my website which showcases the Eureka, what it does, how you can get the best out of your Eureka and the things that you can do with it. So if you would like to know more about the Eureka, I'll pop a link below and you can check it out. I'll also be having a demonstration video showcasing everything that can be achieved with this tool. So I paste, placed my clear stamp face down onto my cardstock, then I closed the door and picked it up. So on this clear stamp I'm going to use two colours, Generation Inks Lime Green and Fuchsia. So I'm going to put the green part where you would naturally have your green leaves. Now I'm doing this stamp in a colour, if you wanted to do it in black for a monochrome effect or any other colours it looks lovely in greys and blues all the same colour but just for the demonstration I wanted to show you how lovely these stamps work um, together and how lovely they um, get great results straight away. So I've put the green part on and because I want it to have a watercoloured look I'm just going to give it a spritz with a little bit of water not too much because I don't want to flood it. Then I close the door and I know that that stamp is going to stamp in exactly the same place that I popped it down. So if I'm not happy with the image once I open my door, don't worry about it, I can do it again. So that's a very refined green, however I would like it a little bit darker. So I'm just going to pop some more green on some of the areas where I didn't put enough just to make it more intense. Another spray with some water and then I know this stamp is going to close in exactly the same place and I won't have any double stamping or anything like that. There we go, I'm actually happy with that one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to the colour of the flower heads. So when I actually watercolored this one I actually did it in blue but for this demonstration I'm just going to do it in a bright pink so you can see what it looks like. So as you can see there, I've got some pink on the green area. I don't really want that on there, so I'm just going to wipe that away with my finger. If you don't want to use your finger, you can use some tissue. Just take it away. It won't make any difference. And once I'm happy I've got enough pink on there, I'm just going to give it a spritz with some water again. And again, if I stamp it out and I'm not happy, it's not bright enough, I can just do it again. You can see the watercolour there coming through. And I am just going to do it one more time to get the bottom of the flower heads. That's it, now I'm happy with that and I've got the full head of that flower there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the clear stamp, which is the solid portion of the door, but before I do that I always like to make sure that my images are dry. If they're not dry you won't be able to get your second stamp on top clearly. So what you need to do is just blast it off with a heat gun just to get rid of any moisture. And then when you're happy it's dry you can then move on to the second part of your stamping process. So 
So make sure you clean your stamps and keep them nice and then they'll last forever. So I'm just going to remove this one and then I'm going to pop the outline down. Now I'm not going to pop it straight onto the door because it would be so hard to line up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second part of the stamp and I'm going to place it face down on top of the stamped image that I've already done and then I know it's going to land absolutely perfectly. So you can take a bit of time lining it up, there is no pressure. Just take some time, pop the stamp face down onto the image that you've already stamped and then when you're happy that it's in the right place, you can ink it up and stamp away. Now I'm just doing this in a black ink pad for, for quickness for one and for two to show you the detail. But this outline lends itself really, really well to gold embossing. Any embossing powders for that matter. But it does look really lovely with um, some sparkly outlines. So it's preference really, but for like I say, for the demonstration of this one, I'm going to do it in black ink so you can see the detail. So the bit that I'm actually inking up now is actually the pencil drawing that I do when I um, start the process of a lamination stamp. As you can see they don't fit perfect, watercolouring is loose, that's how it's meant to be. And I don't think that needs stamping again, I'm actually quite pleased with that one. So. What, what I've been doing in, in the past is I've been putting my sentiments through my images. I think this looks really artistic when you start putting verses through images. It just gives it a little bit of class, should we say, in my opinion. Um, so once I've done this, I'm going to pick a sentiment from the stamp set and I'm going to show you what it looks like if you stamp a sentiment through the base of this image. And then all you have to do then is uh, maybe pop a die around it, mat and layer it onto a card and let the image speak for itself. These do truly look like watercoloured images. I get so many comments from people saying every, everybody said it looks like I've watercoloured it. Now you could actually go in with your brush now and add highlights and depth if you wanted to, if you wanted to spend a little bit of time on it. This has literally taken me a couple of minutes and as you can see it already looks like you've got a watercoloured image but you could spend some time on this putting a background wash on, highlighting the heads of the flowers, giving some light and shade. So the world is your oyster with it really. All I would say is just have a good play and see where it takes you. Sometimes the best cards in the world just come from playing. So I've picked the sentiment, I've inked it up in black again so you can see it on the camera and I'm just going to stamp it through the base of the image. Now that's stamped absolutely fine, I don't need to re-stamp that one. And there we have it. True friends are hard to find, difficult to leave and impossible to forget. Absolutely love that one. So that's the one of the big ones that I've demonstrated there and that's the one that I did earlier. So that's beautiful wishes for a beautiful day, same colours, um, just a different sentiment. So you can just see the difference. So the second stamp set that I want to show you is another lamination one but it's a smaller size. We do our lamination stamps quite large. But I really wanted to try some smaller ones so you can get them onto your C6 cards and your C5 cards. And this lends itself really beautiful to a smaller type card. So again you've got your solid portion in black where you would have your colour and you have your outline what you would do in black inks, pencil, heat embossing. So again just another piece of cardstock. Secure my cardstock down with my magnet and I'm going to use a solid portion first. So you could actually paint direct onto the stamp, you don't have to use an ink pad like I am today. There will be more demonstrations coming on hints, tips and techniques on how to get the best out of your lamination stamps. But today I really just wanted to showcase the new stamps and just show you how lovely they were and how well they stamped out. So all you do is you get your clear polymer stamp and you paste, place it face down, remember, face down in your Eureka. So then when you close your door, your door will pick it up naturally. So for this one I'm going to do a green base and a purple head on the flower, just for some, something different. So just thinking up the bottom part of the flower in the green. 
and now I'm just going to ink up the top in purple. Now before, if you notice, I did them two separate ways. I did the green last time on its own, then the coloured part. But on this one, because they're not that close together, I can get away with doing them both together. A little bit of a spray with some water and stamp it out. And again, if you stamp it out when it's not bright enough, you can just do it again. Reload the stamp with your colours and stamp away. So I think I'm happy with the green, but I think the purple could do with a little bit more. little bit of a spritz with some water again. Now you don't have to use water if you want a more solid look don't use the water what I would suggest is try them either way and see what you like the best. So there we go there's a bright purple head so I'm happy with that one. That splash there is there I painted that splash in so don't worry about it it's not a mucky mark it's actually where I flicked it with my paintbrush and you've got a splash mark. So next I'm going to use the outline, so this is my pencil drawing and again gold embossing lends itself really well to these stamps, I know I keep saying it but it does, it looks beautiful but again for the purpose of this demonstration I'm going to do it in black so it actually stands out. So get your heat tool good and hot before you put it to your cardstock, this prevents any beveling and warping and then give it a blast off to make sure you get rid of any dampness because like I said before the second stamp won't stamp unless you get rid of any moisture. So again place your stamp face down and when you're happy it's in place close the door, pick the stamp up and you're ready to ink away. So this has got this sentiment, uh, sorry this stamp set has got some beautiful bold sentiments now bold is not really me but I really enjoyed working with this one because sometimes you really do need bold sentiments. This black mark on the door, don't worry about it. If you get mark on, marks or ink on your door, it won't transfer onto your cardstock. The um, depth of the machine does not allow that to happen, so don't worry about it. So there you have watercolour flower. And then what we're going to do is we'll get the largest sentiment from the set. And I think we will use have a great day on this one but like before when I said to you stamp it through the image it looks very artistic I think for this one we'll just pop it up the side of the image just to create something different and again we'll do it in black but again it looks beautiful in other mediums so do try and play yourselves and see which you like to do So I don't need to stamp that again, I'm absolutely happy with that, that is a perfect stamp. So there you have your two types, so earlier I did one in the pink I believe and then one in the purple. Two different sentiments stamped in different ways. So I hope you've enjoyed these two quick tutorials demonstrating the cards. Have a great day, bye!